Okay, so the last time we went over our lovely light reactions, we started off with photosystem two. We then moved on to photosystem number one. And we talked about all the different steps that went on in both of these photosystems. Now, remember guys, we start off with photosystem two, not photosystem one. I know it doesn't make much sense, but um, that's the way it is. So I wanted to start off going over just a little review of them. I'll give you guys like the formal notes on the photosystems. And then we will start to go over the Kelvin cycle. So we started off with, in both of our photosystems, we had chlorophyll and chlorophyll was absorbing energy from the sun. Whenever water was split in our photosystem number two, the electron that came off of that got energized by all that sunlight that was absorbed by the chlorophyll. And then that electron moved through the whole thing. All right. Um, ATP and NADPH were both formed in the photosystems. If you remember, we had, um, for photosystem number two, we had the ATP being formed, and that was after the protons moved all the way to the very end to the protein uh, or enzyme ATP synthase. Also, whenever water was split in photosystem number two, oxygen was given off. And then we moved on to photosystem number one, which is where NADPH was formed. And again, remember NADPH, it just carries that electron. If it turns into NADP+, plus, then it no longer has that electron. Right. Um, both of these are going to occur in the thylakoids of our chloroplasts, so both photosystem two and photosystem one. And what we were drawing through all of this last time, the orange and the brown, that is the thylakoid membrane. So some things happen inside the thylakoid and then some things are formed outside, which I will touch on in a little bit. Okay, so here was your books uh, thing of all the photosystems, guys. All right, I liked my diagram a little bit better um, just because we can see everything step by step. Right. So just again, just to review everything, guys, photosystem two, uh, we split water, we absorb sunlight, we form ATP. The electron will then go to photosystem number one, where it's going to combine with NADP+, and we are out of it going to get NADPH. Okay, so whenever we are forming in photosystem two ATP, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a diagram of what's going on between ATP and ADP. So... Let me draw it out for you here real quick. So for ATP, here's our parts of ATP. We have an adenine. So that's adenine. All right. So if you remember adenine was in DNA, we had A, T, uh, G, and C. Attach that, we are going to have a five carbon sugar, which is ribose for ATP. Same stuff that is found in RNA, same, same sugar. And then lastly, attached to that, we are going to have one, two, three phosphates. All right. Now, for this class, guys, we are only going to worry about ATP and ADP. Um, there is an AMP as well, which is adenine monophosphate, which means there's only one, but that's if you uh, take AP years from now. So what ATP is, is it can either be, um, like I said, ATP, or it can get transformed into ADP. ATP is the molecule that stores our energy, okay? How does it store its energy? For our purposes right now, it stores the energy right there in that bond, okay? So that is energy stored, okay? After we need energy, it's going to turn into ADP. So we're still going to have our adenine, 
not going to write everything back in. We are still going to have our ribose. However, now we're only going to have two phosphates here. And then I'm going to plus add the other phosphate over there, showing it's disconnected. Whenever that bond is broken right here, when that bond gets broken, bond gets broken, energy gets released. And then when energy is released, we no longer have that, that bond between our second and our third a, uh, phosphate. So that's why it turns into ADP. So that's your relationship um, pictorially between a TP and ADP, okay? So not only is it just you know losing a phosphate, you think maybe that phosphate could be used as energy. No, it's not the phosphate that's used as energy. It's that bond being broken. Uh, and when that bond is broken, that's how we get our, our energy out of it, okay? Okay, so what happens here, guys, between our light reactions and our Kelvin cycle, which I'm gonna draw you another picture of the chloroplast in a bit, just to show you where everything is going. Um, we are going to, in our light reactions, form ATP and NADPH, which are right here and here. Okay, so we form them. Our second step after the light reactions, okay, remember those are photosynthesis. Whoops, <laughs> that was a bad line, sorry. Um, after our light reactions, which are photosystem two, photosystem one, we are going to take our products, our ATP and our NADPH, and transfer them over to our second step, which is the Kelvin cycle. And what's going to happen here, guys, is the ATP and the NADPH are going to be used by the Kelvin cycle. So we are going to use that energy from ATP. We're going to break that bond between our second and our third phosphate. We are also going to use that electron that NADPH is carrying. And after that electron is used, we get the NADPH transferred into NADP plus, and then they are going to, ADP and NADP plus, are gonna go back to the light reactions to once again uh, turn into ATP and NADPH. So along with the Kelvin cycle being a cycle, we have a cycle between our step one, our light reactions, and our step two, our Kelvin cycle, and that is the cycle between uh, ATP going back to ADP and cycling through, and then NADPH and NADP plus circling through steps one and steps two as well, all right? And don't forget guys, our overall goal of photosynthesis is to make glucose, to make sugar, all right? Um, and why are we making that sugar? The only reason we're making that sugar is so that the sugar can then go through, which is next chapter, cellular respiration, so that the um, sugar can be converted into a large amount of ATP. Think of it like this. Um, Think of it like, I don't know, you go to the grocery store or whatever. Think of the ATP being formed in photosynthesis as you get like one can of Coke, all right? And that's all you get. You get one can. It's just a little bit of ATP, not a whole lot of energy. If you use the glucose that we make in photosynthesis and then transfer that glucose over to cellular respiration, all right, yeah, you're not gonna get the, the one can of Coke right away, but if you wait a little bit and go through cellular respiration, you're gonna get a whole case of Coke. You're gonna get 24 cans instead of just one can, okay? So the goal of cellular respiration is just to make a whole lot of ATP, much more than photosynthesis can make. All right, so we're gonna start on the Kelvin cycle. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of it and then um, We'll stop, I'll give you time to digest it, and then we will um, review it later. So for the Kelvin cycle, we are going to, again, this is gonna be step two. We are going to now be using the rest of our equation for photosynthesis. So if you remember, our equation for photosynthesis, we took in water, we took in sunlight, and we took in carbon dioxide. The sunlight we used in photosystem two and photosystem one. The water we used in photosystem two, we split it, we got the protons out of it, we got the electron out of it, and then we used the uh, oxygen to be released from the plant because that's what we breathe in. 
Now in the Kelvin cycle, we are going to be using the carbon dioxide. All right. And this is going to be our last step. You're going to hear me talk about carbon fixation. All we're doing is when we fix carbon, and I always, when I was in school, guys, I, I always had, uh, I was like so confused because my teacher was like, oh, we're going to fix carbon. I didn't know what fixing carbon meant. All we're doing is combining carbons together to make a larger carbon molecule. That's all fixing carbon really means. All right. And then I'm going to draw a picture of this last bullet point here. The Kelvin cycle occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. So let me draw that for you real quick here. So here is our chloroplast. Yeah, it's a little wonky, it's okay. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about drawing the double membrane, even though there is an outer and an inner membrane. I'm not worried about it because we are not using that. So here is our thylakoids. Okay. Now, in our thylakoids, and I'm just gonna go, ugh, I'm just gonna draw two granums here for us. Inside of our thylakoids, this is where our water is going to be split. Um, in our thylakoid membrane, which if I highlight here in a different color slightly, just do it right there, all right? This is where our photosystem two and our photosystem one, this is where all of these things are going to occur. Now, here's the important part. During photosystem number two, we are going to form ATP. And ATP is going to be formed on one side of this membrane. It can either be formed on the inside or it can be formed on the outside. Okay. And then the same thing with NADPH. It could be formed on the inside or the outside. Now, whenever we are doing this, there is a correct way or a correct side where we want our ATP. So let me erase all this. So in the thylakoids is where our photosystems occur. If we wanted to be real specific, we could say the thylakoid membrane. The Kelvin cycle, actually, let me write that. So PS2 and PS1, that's going to be our thylakoid. If we want to get specific, we'll say the membrane. Our Kelvin cycle This is going to occur in the stroma. Now, if you remember, the stroma is all the area inside of our inner membrane, outside of our thylakoids. So if we are going to be using the products of PS2 and PS1, mainly our ATP and our NADPH, if we're going to be using them in the Kelvin cycle, and let me repeat, repeat that because that's important, we are using our products of photosystem 2 in photosystem one, our ATP and our NADPH, we are using them in the Kelvin cycle. And the Kelvin cycle occurs in the stroma. All of this area out here, that is our stroma, all right? So if we are using them there, we want to make sure that our ATP is formed outside, okay? We also want our NADPH from photosystem number one formed outside of the thylakoid. So that way they are already in the stroma. All right. If we formed them inside, we are actually going to be using more energy to pump them out to get them into the stroma. But if we already form them on the stroma side, we're good. We don't have to worry about anything else. Okay. All right. So that's that. Now you guys know where everything happens. Um, let's do the Kelvin cycle now. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick diagram on the Kelvin cycle. And then give you guys time to look over it uh, tonight. And then to, uh, next time we will just review everything. So we're going to start off with a molecule called RUBP. And RUBP has five carbons. So I'm going to start here. RUBP. 
it has one, two, three, four, five carbons bonded together. All right. What's going to happen is this is going to start our cycle. Now, I'm going to draw just to make sense of everything here, guys. Um, I'm going to draw more than one RUBP. I'm going to draw, say we have six molecules of it. So in reality, we have six molecules, each with five carbons. We actually have 30 carbons there. Um, and if you remember our photosynthesis equation, we have five, I'm sorry, we have six uh, carbon dioxide molecules coming in to be used. So what we're going to do is to start off everything. We're going to take our six carbon dioxides and we are going to bring them in and combine them with RUBP. Okay? And there's an enzyme that is going to put everything together. Now, after they combined, and I'm not worried about the names of this one, we are going to have one, two, three, four. We are going to have a six carbon molecule and we're gonna have six of them. So we're gonna have six, six carbon molecules, okay? So what we do is we take one CO2, combine it with our, one RUBP, we get a six carbon molecule, but we have six carbon dioxides, we have six uh, RUBPs, so we're gonna have six, six carbon molecules, all right? So that is our first step of the Kelvin cycle, is we are bringing in carbon dioxide from the outside. When we are bringing carbon dioxide in, we are combining with our, our RUBP. That is carbon fixation right there. We are fixing carbon together uh, with our RUBP and our CO2, and now we get a six carbon molecule, okay? All right. So after this, we are going to move on here. And what we're going to do is we are going to split this in half, okay? We're also going to bring in some ATPs. We're gonna bring in 12 ATPs. So they're going to get changed into 12 ADPs plus 12 phosphates, okay? So we just use all that energy that we made during our photosystem number two. We are also going to take 12 NADPH and we are going to transform them into 12 NADP plus, meaning we lost an electron. So we're using that electron somewhere. Whenever we split this here, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three. If you look up here, they were once connected. Whenever we split these ones, an electron goes to the end of each of our carbons um, so that we're like kind of filling that, that empty end there. And then also attached to each one, we're going to have a phosphate. Okay. What are these molecules? They are each called PGA. Okay, so this is PGA. How many do we have? All together, we're going to have six on this side, we're going to have six on this side, it's the same thing, so we're going to have 12. All right. After this, we are going to continue on with our cycle. I'm going to go this way, which right here we have 12 PGAs. Right now, once we get over here, we're going to have 10 PGAs left over. And if you remember, there are three carbons a piece. And we got a phosphate on each side. So let's count our carbons here. We have 10, each with three, so we have 30 here. So 30 carbons in total right at the bottom of our cycle here. Let's go to RUBP up here, okay? We have six, each with five, so we have 30. So what happens here is we are going to go right from this and transform our 10 PGAs back into six RUBPs so that it can pick up more carbon dioxide and continue the cycle. While we are doing this, we are going to take six ATPs, so we need some energy to do this, 
and it goes to 6 ADPs plus PI. Okay, so we used energy. You're like, all right, so we're done with the cycle. Nothing, nothing got formed here. You're like, I don't see any sugar anywhere because that's our goal of photosynthesis, right? To make sugar. Well, here's where this comes in. So let me go to this green area right here. I have six PGAs on this side, six PGAs on this side. If we count all of our carbons up, we're going to have 18 on each side. Okay, it's like left and right twix. We have 18 on the left and 18 on the right. So that's 36. We have 36 carbons right here all together. 36 carbons. Down here at the bottom, we had 30 carbons. So what happens here is two PGAs leave the cycle, okay? Now those PGAs each have three carbons, each has a phosphate to them. We are going to later lose that phosphate and those PGAs are going to get converted into, and this is later on, C6, H12, O6, and that is our glucose. And that is our goal. So. What goes on with the Kelvin cycle, guys? We take in carbon dioxide, we combine it with our UBP. We get this six carbon molecule, which we are later going to use ATP and NADPH to split because this whole thing is unstable up here. When it gets split, we form PGAs. We are going to take 10 PGAs and keep them going through the cycle so they can get converted back into our UBP so they can combine once again uh, with CO2, go through carbon fixation and continue on with the cycle. The two PGAs that are lost are going to get converted into C6H12O6, and they are going to leave that cycle, and that is how we get our glucose, okay? So for every six carbon dioxides, we get one glucose molecule out of it, all right? And that is our Kelvin cycle, guys, all right? So that is uh, it for today. You guys can review all this tonight, and then we'll go over um, the formal notes with all the steps, the kind of away from the picture uh, next time. Have a good one.